Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. So I want to speak to you on one of the most important aspects of becoming the great woman and man you were born to be. I want to talk to you about the power of visionary leadership. Write it down. The power of visionary leadership. We want to focus on the the key to becoming an effective leader as a woman or as a man. The power of effective visionary leadership. There are two animals on earth that God identified himself with. And these are two most important animals. And there's a reason why apparently God identified himself with them. Because he created them. These two animals are both leaders. The first one is the eagle. If you read the Constitution of Heaven, you call it the Bible, you will find that throughout that document, God keeps identifying himself with the eagle. He never says that I am the bird of paradise. He never said that I am a pigeon. He only identified himself with this massive, powerful bird called the eagle. You will find in the text of the Constitution words like this. I will bear you up on wings like an eagle. In another place, God says of himself, I, like an eagle, will stir my nest and I shall put you on my pinions like an eagle in another place God says and just like an eagle only gathers around fresh blood even so the Lord will stir you he never identifies with the pigeon The second animal that God identified himself with is the lion. The lion is also the leader of the animal kingdom. So the eagle is the leader of the bird kingdom. And the lion is the leader of the animal kingdom. Even though the lion is not the largest animal in the jungle, he's not the most powerful, he's not the most intelligent he's not the the biggest animal and yet the lion rules the jungle the lion is important because the lion destroys all of your excuses for not being the leader you don't need to be the biggest to be the leader you don't need to be the strongest or the heaviest or the most powerful or even the most intelligent And yet you can be the leader. So the lion defies everything that they taught you about leadership. And that's why God himself identifies with the lion. He says, I am the lion of Judah. Not the dog of Judah. Not the giraffe. Not the elephant of Judah. He identified with this creature that he created. And my question is, why did God identify himself with these two animals so much? The answer is because he put in these two animals certain qualities that make them different from the others. And those qualities are identified as leadership characteristics. That's why it's important to study the lion and to study the eagle 
As a matter of fact, these two animals became my personal friends because it is these two animals that helped me to understand myself and to understand God's plan for my life and to understand how I'm supposed to live. And there are two words I want you to identify with these two animals. The first one, the lion, is the word attitude. The lion is the leader of the animal kingdom because of his attitude. The lion has a deep sense of confidence and courage. He's not afraid of the elephant or the giraffe. He, he eats the hippopotamus. He, he destroys the bulls. He, he, he somehow has this confidence that he can eat any animal, no matter how big they are, no matter how strong they are. The lion has an attitude of self-confidence. The eagle identified with the word vision. Everybody say vision. What makes the eagle dangerous is God placed in the eagle a capacity in his eyes to see from a distance in detail. The eagle is the only bird on earth. As a matter of fact, he's the only animal on earth who can see 50 times better than a human. The eagle can see five miles away in total detail. It's called optica vision. And that's why the eagle is the king of birds. He, he doesn't have to sneak up on his prey to destroy. He can see the prey five miles away where the prey don't even know he's being seen. And by the time the prey discovers he was being seen, it's too late. Because the eagle shoots like a bullet. <laughs> the power of vision is the success of the eagle. I want to talk to you then about the eagle. He's the king of birds because of vision and if you are going to become the leader that you were created to be not only do you need the attitude of a lion which we will discuss when I come back to visit you but for you to become the leader that you were born to be you're going to have to have an understanding of the qualities and the power of vision. First, let me define leadership again for you so that you will have a working definition of what a leader is because you were born to be one, young man. Leadership is defined as the capacity to influence others through inspiration generated by a passion motivated by a vision which is birthed from a conviction produced by a purpose it's a long sentence but each word is important leadership is the capacity to influence other people through inspiration not manipulation So true leaders never manipulate people. They inspire. If anyone tries to control you, they are not a leader. That includes your husband. Uh-oh. Anyone who has to control you is not a leader. It might be your boss. It might be your teacher in the class. It might be your pastor. They are not leaders. Anyone who tries to control another human is not a leader. They are a dictator, an insecure wimp. True leaders never control people. They inspire people. And how do they inspire people? Because of their passion. 
The passion comes from what? It comes from a vision that they have. They believe in their vision. So it creates a passion in their lives. Where does the vision come from? The vision comes from a deep conviction that the person has about why they were born. They believe they were born to do something important. That's called conviction. And where does that conviction come from? It comes from a discovery of a purpose for your life. That you are not a mistake. That you were not just born to make a living and pay bills and die. That's why leaders don't think about paying bills and worrying about money. The leaders are, are people who have discovered something more important than a paycheck. Leaders are driven by a sense of purpose and destiny. They believe that they were born to correct a problem, to bring healing to humanity, to change a community, to transform a society, to impact their country. That's leadership. That's why most people today are not leaders. They just want to make a living. Leadership. Some of you pastors are not leaders. Because you entered the ministry to make a living. You call it a call. We know it's a cash. You got to ask yourself a question today. Why am I in the ministry? Why? Is there a passion for what I'm doing? Am I willing to die for what I'm doing? Leadership is about a conviction. You can be a preacher all your life and be useless. Leadership is not about personal ambition. It's not about private advancement. Leadership is about a deep conviction about your own purpose in life that I was born to fix something. I was born to deliver people from something. I was born to make a difference in the world, not just make a living. Are you a leader? Or do you just have a career? Let me say something very interesting. You may want to remember this. Leaders can never retire. Hmm. If you can stop doing what you're doing and still be happy, you are not a leader. Because you cannot retire from yourself. And a leader is one who has discovered herself. She has discovered who she was born to be. He has discovered what he was born to do. And you cannot retire from yourself. Conviction, passion, vision. I could talk about each one of these components for the next 10 years and never go home. Wouldn't you like that? But I'll talk about one of them today. I want to talk about the one we call vision. But first, I want you to write this down. I want to give you what I call the process of leadership. How to become the leader you were born to be. Everybody, please write this down. First, number one, you must discover your purpose for your life. Without that, you are not a leader. Secondly, you must discover your conviction. That means you must believe in your purpose. Thirdly, you must see a vision of the future that is birthed from your purpose and your conviction. That vision then should give you a passion for life where you want to pursue your vision more than your own security. And that vision gives a passion and the passion inspires other people to believe you. 
Now, when you inspire other people, they allow you to influence them. Once you influence people with your passion, then they call you a leader. So leaders do not look for people. People are attracted to leaders. And that's why every great leader in history never looked for followers. Why do we like Nelson Mandela? Why do we feel so excited about Martin Luther King Jr.'s life? Why are we so inspired and impacted by Mother Teresa? Why are we so impressed? Because they inspired us. Therefore, they influenced us. And we, we call them. You will never find Nelson Mandela calling himself a leader. He has never said it. The people call him a leader. Martin Luther King Jr. will never call himself a leader. He was just a little preacher from a small church. But the world calls him a leader. You see, leaders don't call themselves leaders. They're too busy pursuing their vision. So leadership is a result, not a pursuit. Now what's the key in this process? Two words. The key to becoming a leader, and I'm giving you the secret until I see you again, is purpose and vision. Until you discover your purpose, which should produce a vision for your future, you are not a leader. Leaders are driven by vision. And this is why every politician, every preacher, every parent must have a vision if they're going to be a leader of their families and their companies and their churches and their countries. We, we are not leaders because we have titles. We are leaders because we have vision. And this is why it's important for you to ask yourself a question. Do I have a vision for my life? Here's a statement I want you to remember. The greatest gift God ever gave man is not the gift of sight, but the gift of vision. I repeat, the greatest gift God ever gave man is not the gift of sight, but the gift of vision. What is the difference between vision and sight? interesting question well first of all sight is a function of the eyes but vision is a function of the heart sight shows you what is vision shows you what could be Sight is limited to the present. Vision is unlimited to the frontiers of the future. This is why sight should always be the servant of vision. You should never live according to your eyes. Followers live through their eyes. Leaders live through their vision. Sight is limited to what the eyes can see. But vision is limited only by the imagination of your heart. And this is why leaders are never disturbed 
by the present. No matter what the conditions are, they are always at peace. Because they don't live from the present. No leader should trust his eyes. There's a statement made in the Constitution of our country. For those who are religious, it's the Bible. <laughs> Here's what it says in our Constitution. For we walk by faith and not by sight. The word walk means to live. Listen to those words. For we live not by sight, but by faith. Now faith means belief. Leaders do not live by what they see with their eyes. They live by what they believe in their hearts. And this is why leaders are never easy to live with. Because they don't live where you live. You live in the present. They live in the future. A leader is always out of his mind. She is always somewhere else. That's why she's a leader. They don't listen to noise in the present. They hear the call of the future. True leaders do not trust what their eyes show them. They believe what their vision tells them. The Bible says the just shall live by faith, not by sight. So when a leader has no money, He never panics. She never becomes depressed. Why? Because she knows this is only temporary. I see plenty. <laughs> Leadership demands being out of your mind. And this is why you think it's easy to live with a leader. It's difficult because to a leader the present is not reality to a leader their vision is more real than the present I challenge you young man to believe your imagination more than your eyes let me give you a few challenges about vision versus sight sight restricts you to the present but vision releases you to the future sight captures the present vision captures the future sight deals with what is but vision sees what could be my question what could Papua New Guinea be is there anyone in Papua New Guinea who sees another Papua New Guinea? Don't answer the question. Just think about it. When I sat with your prime minister yesterday, I asked him three times, what is your vision of Papua New Guinea? Because the leader must have another picture. I 
I always judge a leader by their vision, not by their programs. Many pastors that I have met, they don't know what I do when I talk to them, but I'd be analyzing them right away. Sometimes I ask them three questions, and after three questions, I can assess who they are right away. And sometimes I ask them the most difficult question, what is your vision for your ministry? And most of them answer wrong. They say things like, to win the lost at any cost. That is not a vision. And that's why the church is not growing. I ask pastors, what is your vision? And they answer me. To win people to Jesus. That is not a vision. That's no picture of the future. In actual fact, uh, that's not a vision, that's a mission. And there's a difference between a mission and a vision. As a matter of fact, every pastor in this auditorium have the same mission. That's why it's called the Great Co-Mission. Not the Great Co-Vision. To win the loss is every pastor's mission. That doesn't make you unique. When I talk to business people, I ask them, what is your vision for your company? And they say things like, to make a profit. That's not a vision. That's every company's mission, to make a profit. No wonder why your company is broke. Bill Gates never desired to make money. That wasn't his driving force. Stephen Jobs, who created the Apple computer, he never pursued money. If you spoke to him before he died, and you asked him, what was your vision? His, his answer would be, to put in the hands of every human on earth the power of the internet. That's a vision. Visionaries deal with the future. How do you measure a true vision? How do you know if a vision is real? I'm going to give you the answer. Ready? Write this down. Because many people wonder what a vision really is and what is a true vision. First, true vision is a human cause that's worthy of self-sacrifice. True vision is a human cause worthy of self-sacrifice. In other words, a true vision is when you see a future that is so important to humanity that you are willing to lay your own life down to accomplish it. And that's why true visionaries never live for themselves. Mr. Nelson Mandela had a vision of a South Africa without apartheid. A vision where everybody was equal and there was no segregation and there was no racism. He had a vision of a country that where everyone was equal. He saw it. And he went to prison for it. Sacrifice. Do you see something, young woman, that is worth starving for? Religious people disturb me because they always think about their bellies. They want to eat all the time. They want a nice car 
all the time. They want a nice house. They, they want offerings. These are not visionary people. I came to this country and I never asked this woman for a cent. I came here because of you. I came here because I'm driven to raise the mindset of third world people to believe in themselves. I came here because I believe you are great leaders trapped in a follower. If you give me nothing, it wouldn't matter because you are not my support. Abba, Father. Leaders are not driven by personal profit. They are driven by a cause that is so noble that they're willing to personally sacrifice for it. Are you a leader? Young woman, think about it. A true vision demands sacrifice. Number two, true vision is a view of the future that is more noble than self-preservation. I want to say this slowly. True vision is a view or a picture of the future that is more noble than self-preservation and what i mean by that is a true vision is when you see a picture of the future that is more important than your own survival and this is why people like mahatma gandhi when he saw a vision of india being free from british colonial oppression one man decided the future of india that i see is greater than my own life so he went to prison and he told them, I will not eat until my people are free. He began to starve to death in the prison. And the British tried to make him eat. And he, he refused to eat. He closed his mouth. And he starved for the sake of his people. Are you a pastor with a vision? Are you a businessman with a vision? Are you willing to finance your house to make your business successful? Leadership requires sacrifice. The reason why there are very few leaders in this country is because most of us want to preserve ourselves. We don't want no one to hate us. We want to be loved by everybody. We want to be accepted by everybody. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to disturb the community. Don't want to disturb tradition. You are useless. You cannot be a leader without breaking traditions. Leaders are nuisances. True leaders are always a problem because they are always destroying the norm. They break up tradition. They're always bucking against policy. You cannot go to the future by maintaining the present. So leaders go to the future. Well, you know, Dr. Munro, you know, our church been around for 500 years, you know, and I cannot, you know, uh, change the policy, you know, and, and our tradition, our tradition, oh, shut up. No wonder why you got two people in your church. You cannot go to the future if you don't leave the present. Leadership is about movement. You can't lead where you are. <laughs> Let me put it another way. You cannot lead people to where you are. 
Because that's where you are. Leave means you leave where you are. And you go to a place you've never been. Are you a leader? Number three. True vision is not selfish ambition. You know, you ask people sometimes, what is your vision? And they say, oh, to, to, to build a big house by the water. That's not a vision. That's ambition. You ask people, what is your vision? To build a church for 50,000 people. That's not a vision. That's an ambition. What is your vision? Oh, to become a multi-millionaire by age 40. That is not a vision. That is selfish ambition. No wonder why no one's following you. True vision never benefits the visionary. It benefits other people. If what you are pursuing only benefits you it is not a true vision so leaders don't live for themselves they live for people they become the servant of humanity so the greatest is always the servant of others this is why true vision always serves the people Let there be leaders in this country rising up out of this conference who will see a Papua New Guinea that is greater than their private personal ambition. Number four, true vision is not for selfish promotion. It promotes others. Another example of Nelson Mandela, a good example. His, his vision of South Africa never promoted him. He wanted to promote the people of his country. He wanted to set them free and give them equality and give them access to opportunity. He did it for them. That's a true vision. Papua New Guinea, you are in a very critical moment in your development. Your country is becoming very attractive to the global community. And they are coming for your gold and your oil and your gas and your copper and your agriculture. And the question is, will you have leaders who are more concerned about you than about themselves? Because if they have selfish ambition, you will not benefit from your own resources. True leaders promote the people, not themselves. And number five, true vision never destroys people. It builds people. A true vision will never destroy humanity and this is why I have a problem with people like the late bin Laden bin Laden had a vision but it was not a true vision because it destroyed humans the great mind of Muhammad I read the Quran. It's a beautiful book. It's a religious book, of course, not a constitution. And Muhammad writes in his book that anyone who is an infidel must either be killed or made a slave. What kind of vision is that? An 
infidel means anyone who's not a Muslim. His vision was, there's only room in the world for Muslim. Anybody else should be killed or made a slave of the Muslim. What a vision. You can't compare him with Yeshua. You know, I was reading the Bible one day and, and I saw the first terrorists in the Bible. They were worse than Bin Laden. There were two of them. They were terrorists. They are in the Bible. And both of them were disciples of Jesus. Can you imagine? Two of his disciples were terrorists. <laughs> One day, they were walking through a village and he was with them. And two of them came to him and said to, to him, Master, uh, we, we found some people in the village. And they are worshipping. But they are not worshipping like us. Sounds familiar. Then they told Jesus, call down fire and burn them up. That's terrorism. They were worse than Mr. Bin Laden. You see, at least, at least ben, Mr. Bin Laden instructed his cohorts to fly some aircrafts into a building and kill 3,000 people. He instructed his cohorts to strap bombs on their bodies and walk into a marketplace and pull the cord and destroy innocent people. At least he did that. That was okay. But these guys actually asked God to kill them. They were worse. They told Jesus to call down fire and burn innocent people up. What an attitude of leadership. True vision never destroys people. Adolf Hitler had a vision of Europe being under one government like the Romans and he believed that he was called by providence to be the leader of the third Roman Empire and he killed millions of people to fulfill his dream that's not a true vision a true vision never destroys humans would you like to hear Jesus' response to the terrorists Okay. Both of them were called James and John. <laughs> I think they were from Papua New Guinea, maybe. <laughs> they said, call down fire and burn them up. Why? They don't worship like us. No different from what's happening today. And there are terrorists in this room. Some of you pastors are terrorists. You drive past a Muslim mosque. Oh Lord, burn it up. Why you tell God burn the building up, man? You're a terrorist. You're no different. <laughs> I got you. That's not leadership. You don't pray for the destruction of people. And Jesus responded. First he was shocked. Let me quote what he said. It says, And Jesus turned to them and said, Where did you get this spirit from? That's in the Bible. His first answer was a question. Where did you two guys get this spirit from? Now the word spirit there is a small s. It means attitude. Mentality. Where did you get this spirit? Mentality from, he says, killing people. And that's why even though I respect Mr. Muhammad, Jesus Christ's philosophy is superior. 
because he doesn't kill people who doesn't, who doesn't agree with him. Where did you get this spirit from, he said. And then he said these words. I did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Even though they worship differently at the moment. Even though they are still searching. You don't kill them in the midst of their search. And then he made a statement that pastors never preach on. He said, because I have sheep who are not of this fold. How come you don't preach on that? He was telling James and John, your attitude is terroristic. I don't kill people. I save people. And all of them are my sheep. And some of them are in another fold still trying to find me. They can't find me if you kill them. So love one another. Love your enemies. Because they are simply temporarily insane. They are your brothers. They will come home eventually. True vision never destroys. Ladies and gentlemen, men and women, I want to define for you now what vision is. We know what it is not. So what is it? Number one, vision is a conceptual view of the future. Now this word conceptual sounds like a big word. It simply means picture. Picture. A vision is a picture of the future. Secondly, vision is a visual manifestation of your purpose. Your purpose is your assignment for your life. Vision is when you see it in pictures. Thirdly, vision is a glimpse of the reason for your existence. I have a dream. I see the day coming. When little black boys and little white girls will walk hand in hand in the streets of Alabama, I have a dream that a man will be no longer judged by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. I have a dream. Martin Luther King saw something. What do you see about Papua New Guinea? Not the one you're in. Is there a leader in your government, in your country, who speaks like that? I have a dream of Papua New Guinea. I see a country where the streets are paved and people are happy and education is for everyone and health is available and peace reigns in our castles and people are happy in their homes and, and there is no strife and no broken homes and no crime. I have a dream. Is there someone with a dream? Or do you simply want a job? We need leaders, young man. We need leaders, young women. Pastor, businessman. We need leaders, not just entrepreneurs, but leaders. This is your country. And you don't like what you see now. People laying on the side of the streets. Young people without jobs. Unmarried pregnant girls. What is your vision? And 
We need some leaders here. We need people with vision. Where there's no vision, we need leaders. I was sent here to disturb you. What is vision? Vision is the perception of your divine assignment. Vision is the conception of your preferred future, which you prefer to see rather than what is. Vision is the capacity to see the invisible and believe that it's possible. Vision is seeing beyond your eyes and living in your imagination that benefits everybody else. Are there leaders in Papua New Guinea? Esther was a beautiful young girl. She was in her 20s. And she decided to save a whole island and a whole country. Are there 20-year-old women here who got a vision of Papua New Guinea? Like Esther. And Esther knew that I could lose my life. I could die. But she was willing to sacrifice her own life for her people. Uh, do you just want to dress up and wear makeup and, and, and wear dresses? Or do you want to change your country? What a woman Esther was. Nehemiah had a job. He was a, a waiter serving drinks. But he saw a vision of his country. And he couldn't stay on the job anymore. True vision makes your job uncomfortable. He had to leave his job because of his passion for his vision. And he rebuilt the walls of his country. Papua New Guinea needs leaders. I want to give you, before I close, the most important principles of leadership on how they relate to vision. These are important. The first principle of leadership is purpose. You must discover your sense of why you were born. I call it your sense of destiny. Secondly, your passion. Your passion is your personal motivation to pursue your purpose. You are willing to sacrifice for it. And then thirdly, your principles. Your principles are the standards and values you will not violate in pursuit of your vision. And I want to say to all of you that principles protect purpose and passion. And number four, leadership requires the principle of vision. Vision is a picture of your destiny. It's seeing your future in technicolor. Vision is the very purpose for leadership. The only reason why a leader exists is because of vision. So where there is no vision, there can be no leader. And where there is a leader, there has to be a vision. So if somebody said they are a leader and they have no clear vision of the future, they are not a leader, they are a manager. And this is why we must capture vision. Vision is born, but then leadership is born when vision is captured. 
Leadership without vision is simply management of goals. Leadership is what gives meaning when vision comes. Vision gives meaning to leadership. It explains leadership. If I ask you why should I follow you, your answer should be vision. It explains leadership. It makes leadership legitimate. This is why if you want to follow someone, your first question is not, are you intelligent? Or are you powerful? Or are you wealthy? The first question is, where are you going? And if they cannot answer that question, you go somewhere else. You cannot follow someone to know where. So leadership gives meaning and legitimacy from the vision. Vision also provides the direction and the force of leadership. And the reason why leadership exists is because of the vision. So you must capture a vision for your life. And your vision should benefit human humanity. When you sit down to write your vision, check it to see if it benefits other people. If it doesn't benefit other people, it is not a vision, it is personal ambition. All of you came to this earth to improve humanity's life. You got to find out what that is that you were brought here to bring to us. There's a gift that you're carrying that we all need. And I say to you women here in Papua New Guinea, your culture have not allowed you to become all you were born to be. And some of you men got problems with women in leadership. You are sick. Esther saved the whole country. Deborah delivered her people. Mary gave us Jesus. What's your problem? As a matter of fact, let me say to all you pastors right up front, look at me in my eyes right now. Look at me. God depends on women so much for leadership that he doesn't make the church a woman. A, a man, rather. The church is a woman. Oh, let me say it slow. Jesus Christ is the husband. The church is his bride. And he left the world in the hands of his bride. Hmm. 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 Take a deep breath, brothers. That's why I married my wife. I'm a smart man. I married a smart, intelligent woman who's got so much leadership quality that she becomes my wonderful teacher. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, do not suffocate other people's vision, including your spouse. You know, this afternoon, I'm going to talk to the men this afternoon, but let me just talk to the men in the front of the women for a second. <laughs> a lot of men think that women were born to cook food for them, to be in the kitchen. Where's that in the Bible? Sit up straight. Look at me. When you read the Constitution, that's the Bible, you'll discover that the cooks in the Bible are not women. Uh-oh. They are the men. You don't believe me, right? Okay, let's prove it. <laughs> A. 
Abraham had a son. Son was named. What was his name? Isaac. Isaac had two sons. What were their names? Jacob, Esau. Okay. Isaac is God's promised son. And Isaac is about to die. Now, when a man is about to die, he wants the best of everything before he dies. <laughs> so Isaac is on his deathbed. And Isaac says, you know something? Uh, I'm about to die. I know I'm going to die. I want the best meal before I die. His wife was right there. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Sit up straight now. Talk to me. Isaac said, I don't want you to cook, woman. You can't cook. I want my son to cook. He cooks the best meal, he says. <laughs> well, are men the cooks? Let's find out. Jesus Christ went to the cross, died, rose again in the resurrected body. He was sitting on the beach watching the disciples in the boat. And he said to them, caught anything? They said, no. He said, put the net on the other side. And they realized, hey, that's the master. So Peter jumped out of the boat and began to run in the water. And it says, and Jesus was on the shore cooking for them. Come on, guys, clap with me. All the men who want to be like Jesus, hold your hand up, please. All right. That means you got to learn to cook. Thank you very much. Give God a big hand. He was a cook. Women are leaders and they have vision. Stop oppressing them. Let them have dominion. Male and female. Have you ever asked your wife, what is your vision? No, you never. Because you just assume she ain't got none. And that's why you are broke. Come on, ladies, clap for me just for a couple of seconds here. Get it out. I am a wealthy man today because of my wife. Her ideas are amazing. Everyone was born to be a leader. So get over it. It's a new day in Papua New Guinea. Everybody clap. Come on, men, clap with me. Shout yes. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be partners in life. Your wife is not a domestic servant. If you are a king, she's automatically a queen, dummy. All the men clap for the queens in their lives right now. Come on, men, clap loud. Let's say the queens know we love them. All the queens clap for the big kings around them. Come on, ladies. Leadership begins and ends with vision. Write it down. Leadership what? Begins and ends with vision. The reason why leadership is born is because a person captures a vision of the future and it ends when they fulfill that vision and so leadership is about moving from the present into the future it is impossible to lead to nowhere leadership actually supposes a destination if you told me to follow you you must be going to a destination Matter of fact, leadership without a destination is not leadership. 
is simply motion. Leadership without a destination is activity without meaning. Leadership without a destination is simply movement. I've heard it said, and I agree, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. If you aim at nothing, you'll never miss. Leaders know where they're going. They have a destiny. They have a future picture. They know what they want to achieve. And they know exactly what they want to do. They have a perceived and conceived vision. They see the future. He who leads without a vision is simply taking a walk. Leadership without a vision is activity without meaning. Leadership without a vision is the abuse of human talent and resources. Some of you pastors, I warn you, be careful. You could be very abusive of your people. Because if you're collecting their offerings but ain't taking them nowhere, you are a thief. Leadership is about a destination. Not about a program. Give us leaders, O oh Lord. If your government collects taxes, but doesn't take the country to a future, that's abuse of people's resources. If you collect offerings in your church and have no future vision for the people, that's abuse of people's resources. If you got musicians playing for you every week and you got people at the door being ushers but you ain't taking the church to the future then you are abusing those people's talents. Leadership is not about maintenance. It's about movement. Leadership is found in this statement written by Jesus Christ. If the blind lead the blind, he says, they both fall into a ditch. You know, when you fall into a ditch, you can't go nowhere. You're in a hole. And most companies are like that right now. Some churches have been that way for 10 years. A hole. They ain't growing. They ain't expanding. They ain't going nowhere. They're just present. It's a hole. And it's because the person in charge have no vision. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a ditch. If you feel like you are stuck as a country, or stuck as a company, or stuck as a church, the problem is a lack of vision. And so my adm admonition to you as we close this session is this. The most important component in leadership is not power. It's vision. Today, you've got a question to answer. Do you have a vision of the future? Do you believe the pictures in your mind? I love you so much. That's why I came from around the world to talk to you. Because you're getting older. You got no more years to waste. Stop living for yourself. Find something to die for. Young man, go to school and get your education to prepare yourself to change your country. Young woman, go get your degrees from university to prepare yourself to make a difference. Buy books and read them 
Educate your mentality. Transform your thinking. Begin to prepare yourself for your great contribution. Old man, cancel your retirement and get back in the race. Because Abraham started his vision at age 75. Sarah was 75 when she began believing again. May today be the day that a leader was born in Papua New Guinea sitting in your chair. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.